March 27th, UFC 260 going down, headlined by a rematch between Stipe Miocic versus Francis Ngannou. This is a big, big fight for the heavyweight division. You've got Miocic, who's now, you know, reclaimed his belt, had two dominant wins over Daniel Cormier. You've got Francis Ngannou, who, after his loss to Miocic the first time around, had one kind of hesitant showing against Derek Lewis. That's known as a terrible, terrible fight in the heavyweight division. But since then, has just been knocking dudes out left and right like it's his job, because it really is. So with that in mind, this is a, a big rematch. If Stipe can utilize his game plan like last time, wrestle Ngannou, keep him on the ground, get that 50-44, I think is what he ended up with, then it should be his his the entire way. If Ngannou plays it smarter, which is what he says he's going to do, doesn't just start throwing haymakers from there, or just lands one of those big haymakers, it's probably lights out for Sipe. We know he's not we know he's susceptible to being knocked out. It's happened to him before. And Francis hits harder than probably anyone in the heavyweight division. So, Matt, what are your thoughts on this fight? Who do you think is gonna take home the win and the heavyweight strap come March twenty seventh? Hmm. Who do I think will win? I think Stipe will get it done again. But, you know, as the saying goes, you fight the fights for a reason. <laughs> and I think that there's no one more, da- more dangerous than Francis Ngannou inside that octagon. My issue with determining where Francis has developed since that first matchup with Stipe is he hasn't shown that he has done anything to improve wrestling positions to get out of bad positions i mean obviously he's it's hard to prove what you can do when you have outside of the Derek lewis fight less than three minutes of cage time in your next four fights it's very tough and i get that knocking out people in the first 20 seconds 30 seconds 45 seconds of a fight is incredibly phenomenal um it's it just proves how much punching power you have and we all knew that but if you look at his record before the steep a fight um, you have four first round finishes, like all knockouts, right? Outside of the Derek Lewis fight, again, you have four first round finishes. <laughs> I mean, the Derek Lewis fight might as well just not even count because neither guy did anything for five, like for that entire fight. They were just kind of there and they kind of showed up and got a paycheck and went home. I I don't like the idea that Steve Bay could still just show up. I mean, at least for Francis and Francis, a case here in, in making a case for him to win the fight. He hasn't shown us that he can do anything to neutralize what Stipe does well. And Stipe can go in there and do pretty much anything inside that cage. He could pretty much make the first fight all over again, I think. Because I have seen nothing to contradict that from from Francis since the first fight. Yeah, I. it's so hard because Francis is like a black box, right? The two wrestlers he fought since Stipe were Curtis Blades and Cain Velasquez, both who he knocked out pretty quickly. So he didn't really have to worry about, you know, I I was expecting, especially with the Curtis rematch, I was expecting him to have to show up at least a little bit more of his takedown defense or something of that nature. But that didn't really happen. He just kind of finished him. And then Cain came back and you wondered, well, if Cain still got it, he's definitely going to wrestle the hell out of Ngannou. Didn't even get a chance, just flash KO'd. So it's possible that since that Stipe loss, he's been working on his wrestling and actually looks pretty good and can defend the right positions and has made these huge leaps and bounds, and we just haven't seen it. That's what makes this so tough in the prediction. Is He is such a black box because less, less than three minutes of cage time in four fights and all knockouts. It's, it's ridiculous. So that all being said... I still think Stipe can get this done. I, you know, the growth we've seen with Stipe too, right? His ability to adjust mid fight in the DC rematch was incredible to go to the body, get that finish when in a fight, he was probably down on the scorecards. He made that adjustment, did what he had to do, came back and, and took home the W. And then in the trilogy fight, you know, Stipe looked like a whole different fighter and just pieced up DC. It was, it was ridiculous. Clear, clear victory for him. Looks great. I think he's made enough, you know, changes here and, and he knows what he's getting into because he knows he just has to avoid that one punch. Even if Francis has gotten better in wrestling, that's really what he has to watch out for is take away the power punching positions. If he's got him up against the cage or on his back where Francis can't get as much power as normal, probably not going to get knocked out even if he does get hit. 
I think his game plan will be just immediate ways to take him down. And as long as he doesn't get hit coming in, it's Stipe's match to lose. But it, it will be a five round fight. And if Nganu doesn't gas himself out or has improved cardio or what have you, and is also, you know, better at wrestling, who knows? This could be a long night for Stipe if it's standing more than on the ground like he wants it to be. So I'm still leading Stipe here, but it's it's 55-45 for me. It's, you know, this this is by far, in my opinion, the most dangerous matchup for Stipe in the division right now, just because of what Francis does. So let us know in the comments who you've got winning this fight. Do you think that Stipe is going to do what he did last time, take Ganu down and, and get that decision, or who knows, get a submission or something crazy like that? Uh, do you think... Nganu's changed enough as a fighter. He knows what to expect this time around. He's going to you know, be more cautious, find his shot, and end up KO in the champ. Let us know who you think takes this. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, little bell notification. Matt, anything to wrap this one up? Um, I think the best approach, you know, giving everything that we said um, – will be for Francis to come out and try to take off Stipe's head. <laughs> I mean, I think that's what he what he's going to do anyways because he's just so used to doing that against everyone. Um, the one time he didn't try to do it was against Derek Lewis, and that ended up just being an absolute dud, and he got a loss on his record. So I think he's going to try to come out, although he may not try to do it in the first, like, 30 seconds. I think he should still try to come out and put that pressure on really, really quickly and make Stipe have to react to him. Because if he lets Stipe try to get comfortable and really start flowing in there, then that's bad news too. It's it's going to be a, a, an interesting fight for however long it lasts. If it ends up being a decision, then that's what it is. And if it ends up being a decision, I think we can all agree that Stipe is going to go home with the hashtag and still. So I think Francis, if he wants to get that chance to become champion, he's really going to have to go out there and try to take it quite literally. Interesting. I think, I don't know. I kind of think he should stay back a little bit and look for, you know, keep his distance a little bit more, keep, keep himself positioned in a place where Stipe can't just, you know, go in for an easy shot, make him work for it and look for that big counter punch. I think patience is the name of the game on this one. I don't feel like he should fight how he fought Derek Lewis, but I would say that that strategy is probably would pay off more for him than it did the first time when he was just throwing big shots and Stipe was able to dodge him and then get the takedown as he was coming forward. So I actually think Francis should stay back, wait, pick his shots when he's ready, maybe do a little, you know, movement for him, but make sure that he Stipe is having to go in and really go for double legs or single legs from a big distance. Don't, you know, be throwing haymakers and then let Stipe slip under you and then just take you down with ease because that's that's what happened in the first fight. So that's my my opinion. Let us know how you feel. Which game plan is better? Is it mine, which it clearly is, or is it Matt's, which you can say that if you want, but <laughs> let us know in the comments. And yeah, March 27th for all the marbles, man. <laughs>